in person and to see those of you that are worshiping with us, not watching, worshiping with us at home, uh, online, or wherever you are. We are so glad that you're connected to this congregation. And about that, uh, please send in comments during worship. Make them nice about the, about the sermon. <laughs> Uh, but if you have prayer <laughs> concerns or other things or have questions, you go ahead and put those on Facebook or send them into an email and they'll be responded to. We're just glad to have you as a part of this community. Friends, there are some uh, important things going on in the life of the church. Um, you will see on our website or through the phone app that in another week, Sunday afternoon the 15th, we'll have what's called the Charge Conference. That's an annual meeting of the church. Uh, and while only the church council are the elected voting people, everybody's welcome. And it's done by Zoom. So you won't even have to get dressed or come to church. Just you can Zoom in and participate as we celebrate what God is accomplishing uh, here uh, with and through First United Methodist Church. We have a big night of youth ministry planned for this evening for our 6th through 12th graders. We're doing a mission project here at the church and packing 50 shoe boxes for Operation Christmas <laughs> Child. We're also having Luigi's Pizza, so we do welcome all of our 6th through 12th graders. I, I have to do this. <laughs> so this morning, I came into the church and I walked by Sarah's office and the boxes are stacked literally to the roof. And Bradley's in there, and I said, Brad, I knew what they were for. I said, Bradley, how many of these are for you? And you said what? Zero. <laughs> they were all for Operation Christmas Child. <laughs> it's easier to order stuff from Amazon than it is to go to a store right now. And speaking of that, we've had lots of adults ask yeah. how they can participate and help in Operation Christmas Child. And things are a little bit different this year. Um, we do not have here at the church a big stack of boxes for you to come and get and take home, but guess what you can do? You can order that online. Um, you can go to the Operation Christmas Child website. You can print off all of the information that you need to pack a shoebox. You can order one of the pre-printed shoeboxes. You can also buy them at Hobby Lobby if you don't mm -hmm. like to order stuff. And you can go online and learn how you can fill that up. You can bring them to the church by November 15th, and we will bless them and pray over them and make sure that they get where they need to go for the next step of their journey. So really the only difference is you just can't come here to get your box. But youth, we have That's everything right. y'all need to pack 50 boxes tonight. So we look forward to seeing hopefully 50 faces. We do. There's a lot more going on all through the week. Uh, there's study hall. There's FCA stuff. There are Bible studies. There's Kingswood ministry. The best way to keep up with everything is to use the phone app. It's the free app for your phone. And with notifications, you'll keep up with everything. And along that line, Sarah, Kim, Waylon. <laughs> Thank you for the notification. Last week was my birthday. Thank you to all of you who called or sent cards. And yes, I now am shooting my age on the golf course on the front nine. <laughs> Let's worship. Whoa, whoa, Let's all stand whoa, and listen to our praise this morning.
Amen. You guys can be seated. Our first scripture lesson this morning comes from 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 10 through 20. Hear these words. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and to give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you and we have given you only what comes from your hand. We are foreigners and strangers in your sight as were all our ancestors. Our days on earth are like a shadow, without hope. Lord, our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a temple for your holy name comes from your hand, and all of it belongs to you. I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. All these things I have given willingly and with honest intent. And now I have seen with joy how willingly your people who are here have given to you. Lord, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of your people forever and keep their hearts loyal to you. And give my son Solomon the wholehearted devotion to keep your commands, statutes, and decrees and to do everything to build the palatial structure for which I have provided. Then David said to the whole assembly, Praise the Lord your God. So they all praised the Lord, the God of their fathers. They bowed down, prostrating themselves before the Lord and the King. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, we now join our voices with all of those who are worshiping together with us, both here and on our website and with Christians around the world as we proclaim and profess the faith that unites us in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. Would you stand? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of our Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated. Christ to be a people of prayer. Prayer for us is not perfunctory. It's not just a thing we do. It's about our relationship with Almighty God. It's about Our trusting that there's a God who hears us, who already knows, but wants to hear our faith expressed. And so we express our faith of celebration and thanksgiving, and we express our faith of intercession and need. Are there any prayers of thanksgiving or celebration that you would like to offer? Waylon. Yeah. Mike Dixon. Where are you, Mike? Right here. Yeah, 5K, way to go, bridge run, excellent. Other prayers of celebration. How about intercession, need, petition? 
We want to remember uh, Andrea Benton. Her mom died this past week, and so we pray for her. And many of you have also now heard the news that the wife of Dr. Davis in our community has died. Uh, and so we pray for Dr. Davis and that loss. Waylon, any other prayers that have come in? Doris, we do lift up Marshall, and we also lift up the entire Wade family uh, as y'all continue to navigate these days after Sam's death. Thank you. We, we pray for the young people of our community all the time. But we know that in these current days, there's some special challenges. Uh, many of those that are more isolated, home, missing the community, and, and the discipline of the connection that they have. So we pray for them, some of the challenges being faced in this community uh, in their lives. Sure. My goodness. So, Christy, we do pray for our, your sister Renee's fiance, who, Randy, um, and for the implications of, of that post, uh, post procedure. And we, we pray healing grace. Yes, please, Elise. Yes. Elizabeth, for your mom, Linda Ray, prayers of thanksgiving, her numbers going down, moving the right way. We pray for strength and continued healing to her. Other prayers? Other prayers? Please. For unity, in our unity in our nation. We pray for unity in our nation and for God's great sovereignty over his whole world. Let's go together to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Our hearts can overflow with gratitude uh, because you are good and you pour out upon us new mercies each day. We thank you for the gift of life for the gift of faith, for the gift of this community and the calling you set upon us to be a light, uh, to serve in your name. We do pray that you will comfort those that grieve. We honor their grief as they experience this loss. We pray faith and hope for them as well. For those that are experiencing health crisis or are getting better, we rejoice that you are with them always, that you're the great physician. You're the one that sustains us. We pray for your sovereignty, for the unity of our nation. We pray for uh, your word to, to rule. We pray for our young people in this congregation and in this community as they navigate these days. Watch over and protect them. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, kids. Um, it's so good to look out and see that there are kids worshiping with us in person. We do invite y'all to stay in your seats, or if you really want to, you could come sit on this front row right here. Um, we also know that there are so many kids worshiping with us online. I brought something to show y'all this week. Um, this is out of my office. Can y'all see what that is? It's a plant. And just like every other kind of plant, it started out its life as a little, teeny, tiny seed. This plant and even the great big redwood trees that grow out in California and even all our favorite fruit trees, they all start out as little, teeny, tiny seeds. Hey, kids who are here this morning, I have a question for you. What's your favorite kind of fruit? Bradley, what's your favorite kind of fruit? Probably a banana. That's a great answer. So if we wanted to grow 
a banana, what would we need? What would we need, buddy? A banana tree? Yeah. And banana trees, like everything else, they start out as little seeds. So if I had a banana seed in my hand, could I get a banana by just holding the seed in my hand really, really tight for a really long time? Would that work, you think? No, that wouldn't work. What if I took the banana seed and I just shoved it in the drawer under my bed where I keep my random collection of stuff I won't let my mommy throw away? Bradley, could I get a banana if I just stuck it in that drawer? No. Could I get a banana if I just stuck it in my pocket? No. What would I have to do to get a banana? What would I have to do with the seed? I would have to plant it in the ground. I'd have to dig a, a little hole and cover it back up. I'd have to make sure it got sunshine and water. I'd have to go out there and maybe talk some nice words to it and say some prayers. Y'all, we have to plant the seeds that we're given to get them to grow in our lives. We're mailing everybody, kids, a really fun project to your house. So make sure you have your moms and your dads check the mail this week and do this together. We're mailing everyone a pack of seeds. And these aren't banana seeds, but I promise, Bradley, I will cook something good with them because these are herbs, gourmet herb blend. You got some basil in there for making spaghetti sauce and some parsley to make everything look pretty and some chives to cut up and put in your soup. Y'all, we're giving you these seeds to remind you that God gives us so many seeds, and we have to sow them and plant them out into the world in order to reap a fruitful harvest. So kids, we hope you enjoy planting your seeds this week. Adults, we hope you enjoy that too. Guys, will you all bow your heads and let's pray together? Thank you, God, for the blessings that you give all of us, the seeds of grace and love and peace and hope that you sow in our hearts. Help us take those seeds and sow them back out into the world so that our lives might be an offering for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, we do come now to a time in our service where we remember that it is an important part of our worship life together to give back to God, God's tithes and our offerings. You are welcome in this moment to give those tithes and offerings by pulling out your phone and using that Give app or using our church website. There's also a basket in the back. We do continue to be so thankful for the many ways we see generosity at work here in our community through the gifts that you give so many of you so generously to pilgrimage for this upcoming weekend and for Kim McConkie and her crew who cooked lunch for us on Wednesday for Kingswood. We continue to be thankful for all the seeds that we see blooming and growing all around us. Let's continue to worship. Amen. Everybody falls sometimes. You gotta find the strength to rise from the ashes. Make a new beginning. Anyone can feel the ache. You think it's more than you can take, but you're stronger, you're stronger than you know, don't you give up now, the sun will soon be shining, you gotta face the clouds to find the silver lining, and I've seen dreams that move the mountains, Hope it doesn't ever end, even when the sky is falling. I've seen miracles just happen, silent prayers get answered, broken 
hearts become brand new That's what faith can do It doesn't matter what you've heard Impossible is not a word It's just a reason For someone not to try Everybody's scared to death And they decide to take that step Out on the water But it'll be alright Life is so much more Than what your eyes are seeing You will find your way If you keep believing I've seen dreams that move the mountains Hope that doesn't ever end Even when the sky is falling Broken hearts become brand new That's what faith can do To overcome the odds When you don't have a chance That's what faith can do When the world says you can It'll tell you that you can And I've seen Dreams that move the mountain Hope that doesn't ever end Even when the sky is falling I've seen miracles just happen Silent prayers get answered Broken hearts become brand new That's what faith can do That's what they can do. Even if you fall sometimes, you will have the strength to rise. Let's all rise and sing this morning and worship together. Close your eyes and worship this morning if you know the song. Give it all to Him. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart. Pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. 
your breath in our lungs and we give you all our praise and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing Sarah, um, 30 years ago, my children told me that every time I used them in a sermon, that I had to put a dollar in a jar for them. We didn't do it. We fed them instead. Sorry, Bradley. Our lesson this morning comes from the 25th chapter of Matthew. Jesus is teaching. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put that money to work and gained five more. So also the one with two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. 
You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you've not sown, gathering where you've not scattered seed. So I was afraid. And I went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown, gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the banker so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten. For everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, your word is not always easy to hear. Sometimes it pinches. Sometimes it empowers. But most of all, Lord, through your word, bring us into your happiness. Amen. So, 20 years or so ago, a young couple in the church I was serving approached me with a question. They asked, Pastor, it's so hard. When there's only $50 left over at the end of the month. And we've got to decide whether to give what we intended to God or to spend it on the bills or just go out to dinner. And sometimes there's nothing left. What do we do? And I thought for a moment, And I said, don't give God what is left. Give God what is right. Think about that for a minute. Now, I wasn't making light of them or or judging them because I think it's a situation that we have all found ourselves in. We spend our hard-earned money All month long on personal things and family things and business things. I mean, friends, the mortgage comes first. And and then you got to have health insurance and food bills and education and some recreation and entertainment, clothing and utilities. And at the end of the month, there will be little to nothing left. So do we give God what's left? Or do we give God what's right? Now, how do we know what that is and how do we do it? We let God's word teach us. So let's listen. Principle number one, it's all God's. In that 29th chapter of First Chronicles, we hear about the preparations that King David and the people are making for the building of God's temple in Jerusalem. David is going to pass this task on to his son Solomon, but he's going to give it a good start, a strong foundation. So David and the people make gifts and offerings. And David praises God saying this, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are ruler over all things. And so David takes his wealth and he he makes a great offering to God. And 
And, and it wasn't just from the royal treasury. It, it says it was from his own personal resources. But did David boast about that? See what I've done? No. He says, who am I? And who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you. And we have only given you what comes from your hand. Right giving only happens when we acknowledge that everything belongs to God. Everything I am, everything I have is of God. And so that makes us something that we don't often use as a word to describe ourselves. The word is stewards. Stewards. In the Bible lesson from Matthew, I tried to emphasize one key word. It says that the master entrusted his wealth to the hands of his servants. And he did it in, in three differing amounts, and, and they called them talents back then. But, but the point was, now, even though it was in their hands, it still belonged to God. When we talk about money in our world, we often talk about risk and reward. But as stewards, we primarily speak in terms of responsibility. We are responsible as stewards to use, invest, and apply God's resources God's way as faithfully as we can. I, I know that now that I have a grandson who is three weeks and three days old, his name is Owen, Mary Lynn's got pictures that, that you're going to hear stories like this. But okay, so whether, whether it's your child or your grandchild, all of us thrill to hear their first words, right? Dada, mama, eventually you will hear no. And then at some age, it doesn't take near as long as we wish it would, that word, mine, mine. Now, I don't know about in your household, but Mary Lynn and I did not, when the kids were young, walk around the house pointing out individual objects and saying, mine, mine, mine. I tried that with the TV remote. So Mary Lynn pointed at the vacuum cleaner and said, yours. But where does it come from? Mine. Well, I think it comes from the fall. The fall from God. When we start claiming very young, and it seems to rarely stop, saying mine. When it all belongs to God. Principle number two, it is about God's work. When David spoke about building this temple for God, he wasn't talking about building his palace, his royal uh, residence. He, he was talking about doing something for God. He said, the task is great because this palatial structure is not for man, but for the Lord God. And so it wasn't about David's place or his position or his power but about the glory and renown of God. Friends, let me, let me assure you, we here are not about building our kingdom. We're not doing what we're doing for our reputation. We're about God's work. Nothing more, nothing less. In the parable of the talents, when the master entrusted those resources to his servants, why did he do it? For their creature comforts? For their entertainment? For their investment record? No. He entrusted these resources to his servants to accomplish his own purposes. And judgment came upon the forgetful servant. The budget that we work from in this church 
is a reflection of the ministry that we believe God is calling us to do. We begin by asking God what God wants to accomplish. Then we ask God how God wants us to spend his money. And then we receive God's wisdom and seek to be obedient. Three, God comes first. In Genesis, many of you may know the story of Cain and Abel. And we sometimes read that story and we think we're just reading about uh, sibling rivalry and jealousy between brothers. Or there are those that want to quibble about the kinds of gifts that each one made. You know, Abel, he gave of livestock. Cain, he gave of his crops. Maybe one is better than the others. But the truth is there is a much deeper truth being revealed. It says of Abel, he gave the first fruits of his herds. And of Cain, it says, in the course of time, he brought his offering. In the course of time, when he got around to it, with what was left. We are to give God the first and the best of everything. We're to give the best of our hearts, of our minds, of our time, of our energy, and of our financial resources. If we're too tired or too busy to spend time in God's word or in prayer, if we are too tired or too busy to help another person in need, if we're too tired or too busy to dedicate Sabbath time to the focused worship of God, if we are too stretched by our desires and debts to give as God wants us to give, then we are giving God leftovers instead of first fruits. Principle four, it's about the heart. David says, I know, my God, that you test the heart and you're pleased with integrity. See, God God knows our hearts and he's not tempting us, he's testing us, he's giving us an opportunity to show that there's an integrity between our our thoughts, our hearts, and our actions. He wants there to be that integrity, that connection, that unity. So David was once described as a man after God's own heart. And in the verses just before the one Sarah read this morning, it says, the people rejoiced at the willing response of their leaders, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. A new convert to the faith declared his determination to give everything he had to the Lord. And so he said, Pastor, if I had 50 pigs, I'd give 25 of them to the Lord. The pastor said, amazing, you would give half? Absolutely, said the new believer. The pastor said, you mean so if you had 30 pigs, you'd give 15? Done. If you had 10, would you give 5? Absolutely. And then the pastor said, so if if you had 2 pigs, would you give 1? And the man said, pastor... Don't ask me that. You know I only have two pigs. This week, we sent out the letter talking about how our generosity emphasis is sowing for a fruitful harvest. And I spoke in that that message about, about how God is sowing seeds into us. Seeds of faith and love, and service to our community. And there is a fruitful harvest happening in and with and through this congregation. And and as Sarah said, seeds grow, but they don't grow when we hold them in our hands or tuck them in our pockets or under under, under the bed where you don't want mama to throw stuff away. Gotcha, I heard that. We can only expect growth if they're planted. That's when they bear fruit. 
God gives us enough. Not for everything that our heart or flesh desires, because there'll never be enough for that. There'll always be something that you want to spend your money on, even your last penny. But I believe that if we give God what is God's, if we give for God's work, if we give first, and if we give from the heart, there will be enough. Because that's God's promise, not mine. In fact, in Malachi, God even says, test me and see what I can do if you are faithful. So let's think about the seeds that God entrusts into our hands, about our trust in God's provision for our best and for the ministry to which he calls us, and about how we can step up, especially in these days, and so generously. Brothers and sisters, my friends, fellow disciples, let's not give God what's left. Let's give God what's right. Because whose seed is it anyway? Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, tis so sweet to trust in you. For you know our needs before we even ask. And you give abundantly, more than we can even imagine. Help us be faithful to you, Lord. Help us to see the power of generosity when it is loosed and sown for you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his, his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his, his face toward That's right.
Lord, let our hearts be generous this morning, this week, Father God, as we go out. We give you the glory, Lord. We receive your blessing, Father. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family, in your children, and their children, and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family, in your children, and their children. And the children may his favor be upon you and the thousand generations in your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and the thousand generations in your family and your children and the children Receive this blessing, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sustaining fellowship of the Holy Spirit to be with each of you this day and forevermore. Amen.